The following program is intended for mature audiences. A Democratic Republic of Sports. The Sportsocracy with ESPN Asheville host Tank Spencer and Jeremy Green. I'm Tank Spencer, Jeremy Green, alongside as always, and you are in the Sportsocracy. And we are in the Wicked Weed Studio. WickedWeedBrewing.com. Wicked Weed Brewing. Drink different. The Baltimore Ravens, how do you get over a week one loss? Well, you beat the defending AFC champions. <laughs> uh, they beat the Chiefs this past week, 36 to 35. Lamar Jackson has had an incredible start to the year. I, this, this is a team that I have, I have expected them to be right in the mix for a Super Bowl, con, you know, for Super Bowl contention, and nothing is going to sway me off of that. Losing to the Raiders in the first week, I went, eh, maybe there's a problem. And I saw the Raiders beat the Steelers. And I know, I know, stop it. Uh, and then I be, uh, see, and then I see them beat the Chiefs the next week, and everything's going to be just fine with this team. You still have the question of injuries. <laughs> it's just one of those things football teams have to deal with. Same well, now as, Lamar Jackson's hurt. He didn't practice today. Yeah. Said his hip sore after the flip into the end zone. Good for I've you. I've said that a lot. Way stop go, doing that. <laughs> but, you know, you're playing the Baltimore right or you're playing the uh, Detroit Lions, yep. so not overly worried about it. No. Uh, big takeaways from the Chiefs game, you ran really well. You exposed that defense for it's still as weak as we ever thought it was. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot to like to me, and you shut down Tyreek Hill. Mm -hmm. After what Darren Waller did, that was important. Now, you still let Travis Kelsey go to Nanners. So th I, I do believe there is something to be said for Maybe you should play tight ends against the Baltimore Ravens. Now, they did play, you know, two of the three best tight ends in the league start the year, and they get one of the top five this week. Mm -hmm. May not be a habit, may just be a circumstance. But <laughs> right. <laughs> I think there's a little bit of a a little bit of a gap in between Travis Kelsey, Darren Waller, and TJ Hawkinson, but there's a gap, but he's still in the top five. Oh, sure. I'm not going to disagree with that. Uh, Lamar Jackson running for 100 yards again is a very real possibility. You, oh, I would agree. Sh you should be able to win this game comfortably, despite the fact that, it, that it's on the road. I really do not care. <laughs> Baltimore is going to kill the worst teams in the NFL, and De Detroit definitely falls into that category. For Vegas me. currently has them at 32. This game will never be close. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, I'm shocked it's only an eight-point spread. I think they are going to obliterate this number. Uh, Marquise Brown had a good game against the Chiefs, 113 yards, one touchdown on six catches. Are you concerned that Mark Andrews hasn't been a bigger factor? No. Okay. Game script. I wouldn't have loved Mark Andrews against the Raiders anyway. Mm -hmm. He had five catches against the Chiefs. You know, that's, that's fine. Okay. He'll have big weeks. There's a reason I didn't have him in the top five in fantasy going into this year. Mm -hmm. Sammy Watkins was going to be a bigger piece of this offense than you thought. Mm -hmm. And when Rashad Bateman comes back, he'll be a bigger piece of this offense and on and on down the line. This is going to be a team that kills you with death by a thousand paper cuts. There's no one person outside of Lamar Jackson that you're terrified of. Mm -hmm. But the combination of all of them is daunting. It is that. Now they have Latavius Murray in town. You think he's going to take over the Gus Edwards role in this offense? I believe he eventually does. Tyson Williams continues to, that's still going to be a split backfield. I believe Tyson Williams will be the change of pace, the, the J.K. Dobbins role from last year to, to Gus Edwards, Latavius Murray. Mm -hmm. I just think Latavius Murray is going to start out touching him reasonably soon. Right. Tyson Williams is one of those guys that I don't see getting a 15-plus carry workload. You know, he had 15 touches against Kansas City, and I think that's about where he should be. He's mm -hmm. very electric with the ball in his hands. Uh, there are... There's a lot of boomer bust with him when he uh, when he touches the ball. Yeah, I think you need the consistency of Latavius Murray to keep that engine rolling. And I think the the more he gets acclimated to this offense, the better. Mm -hmm. Le'Veon Bell is an afterthought. Devontae Freeman will be. You remember Justice Hill? Uh, that's Devontae Freeman. This is Devontae Freeman's role now. He's a he's a slightly pudgier, uh, not nearly as fast version of Justice Hill. Mm -hmm. 
I think Tyson Williams and Latavius Murray, too, are going to be used uh, more in the passing game. They'll, they'll they start jumping to off that. to those guys. And Baltimore doesn't tend to do that. That's one of those things that's always blown my mind of how big of a piece of the offense they are and how little they get thrown to. Mm -hmm. Tyson Williams, I mean, yeah, I think he's going to be in that two to three targets a game. That's where he falls in. If you told me he had 50 targets at the end of the year, yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. All right. Um, what does Vegas say about this game? Baltimore Ravens at the Detroit Lions. Uh, currently 86% of the money and 73% of the tickets are on Baltimore. That's exactly what it should be. Yep. The implied value is not great, but Vegas doesn't like bigger numbers. They never do. You'll never make hay with Vegas throwing out big numbers. I just think this is one of those weeks where it doesn't matter. They're coming off a big emotional win. They don't want to lose any of the momentum of that, so they'll come in and squish Detroit like a bug. Uh, concerns about the offensive line. We have we saw him get beat like a drum in the Raiders game. <laughs> and Alley Villanova okay. is not good. Yeah. But you still have pieces. You still got pieces of the offensive line. And as long as you got Lamar Jackson, you can't send doghouse blitzes on him anyway. If you do, he's going to burn your ass. Mm -hmm. Lamar Jackson's like Chipotle. Don't tempt it. It will burn your ass. <laughs> I think they need T-shirts. They got to have T-shirts. Lamar Jackson will burn your ass. Yeah. If you tempt fate and send six plus at him, it's not going to go well for you. Yeah. Get the spicy salsa on your burrito bowl. It's yep. not going to work out for you. Tomorrow will suck. They should roll easily against the Detroit Lions. And uh, you know what? I, I, I really can't see the Ravens losing another game until maybe December. Wow, that long? Uh, well, they go Lions, Broncos, Colts, Chargers, Bengals, Vikings, Dolphins, Bears, Browns, Steelers. The schedule is very Steelers, favorable. Steelers, Browns. That's you're, you're going to lose a game in there. You could possibly lose two games in there, but depending on how Pittsburgh looks at that point, hell, you may not lose another game until you get down to the Packers in mid-December. The schedule is favorable. Mm -hmm. They've had the toughest schedule in the league through two weeks. For the remaining 15 weeks, they're 26. <laughs> yeah, the outlook for uh, Baltimore's pretty rosy. Enjoy it, fans, and hopefully Lamar won't hurt himself jumping into the end zone anymore. No more flips. I'm Tex Spencer. He's Jeremy Green. We are the Sportsocracy, uh, the Democratic Republic of Sports. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you see all of our team-by-team -team content here on the channel throughout the NFL season. And, of course, we are live every weekday morning in the Wicked Weed studio at 10 a.m. We will see you next time.